Um, again, I'm just going to show this video very quickly. This was one of the first teeth I ever did that I saw these anastomoses, um, you know, filling the mesial, the mesial buccal canal of a lower molar and it, watching it come up the mesial lingual of a lower first molar. And then it had the same phenomena happen in the distal canal. And it just blew me away the first time I saw this. I just was astounded by it because I had never really experienced that with all the flushing and convent with conventional methods. And when I started to utilize the laser and PIPs, I've seen this. This is routine now. I mean, I, if I don't get this, I'm a little bit worried that I haven't got the system cleaned out properly. And notice I don't say root canal. I say system because it's a system. And I want to clean that out totally in three dimensions. Again, here's a, here's a lower canal, five, mol five canal molar. There's three mesial canals here. This is a lower first molar. This is not a wisdom tooth. And I'm filling one canal and I'm three-dimensionally obturating all the canals at the same time. Can't do that with gutta percha. And I don't know what I'd do without my microscope, Jay. Honest to God, that is the best tool. So fun. Mm -hmm. Look how far away this one is from this. Watch what happens. Upper first molar. Uh -huh. And again, I'm just trying to show how clean the, the chamber even looks when you get done using pips in the chamber. It's just crystal clear and clean. It's beautiful and pristine. It's, uh, it's a dentist's dream. Yeah, it is actually. How, how sad. Don't ask me how I thought of that. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh. But again, three-dimensional obturation. I get so excited when I see this. this. This case is real familiar to somebody in the room because it's a molar that I retreated for him. He flew all the way to Whitefish just to have this done. His tooth was failing, and so we went ahead and pipsed it and, uh, and retreated it for him. Teeth like this with big curves, it makes it real simple and very confident that you can get around those curves and clean those out because the, the pips allows you to get in there and do that. It's very simply. It's a case I did last week. Again, utilizing pips, minimally invasive. If I'm going to file, which I do, I'm only going to file up to a 20. I'm not going to file any larger than a 20. I don't need to. There's just no need to hog all that tooth structure out. Minimally invasive endodontics. Pips allows that. Here's a case I did about two months ago. Very complicated root system. And pips again, allowing me to three-dimensionally clean. And look at all those deltas on all those, all those roots. It's allowed me to do endodontics like I've always thought maybe I could do. Internal resorption case. How do you clean all that junk out in there? Mm -hmm. How do you get that granulation tissue out? It's impossible. There's not a file made that can get in there. Get a file in place, get patency. I pipsed it, I placed calcium hydroxide in the case for a little while, and then I went ahead and used endores. This case was done about four years ago. Completely successful, no problems. Okay, I use gutta percha, 3D obturation, so I'm using the same principles, uh, only I use pips prior to filling, and these are the kind of fills we're getting, just so you can get an idea. Still very conservative, I don't go usually past a 20 ISO size. This is 2004 tapering. Uh, I use uh, GT taper. Bless you. Okay. Go ahead. After we get done showing you these cases, we've got some exciting signs to show yeah. you, too. So, Just to show you, see, once again, you're able to be minimally uh, invasive and still maintain integrity, I believe, with the root system. Go ahead. Again. Look at the, uh, the root system on that. All those little lateral fibers, et cetera. I'm sure if it wasn't for pips, I don't know that I could have got that sort of fill. But there you go again. There you go. See the the the, the lateral canal on that on that uh, first bicuspid. That's mm -hmm. that's the kind of stuff you see all the time. I'm filling it with uh, warm gutta percha 3D. Yeah, and I use by the way, and I use Kerr's sealer. So as you know, before we uh, we place sealer in there, and so whatever. Wherever the, I'm sure the gutta percha doesn't flow, the sealer does. That's when, that's why I'm, I'm thinking more and more that as we go to a more minimally invasive procedure such as that, that we can get with pips, we're going to need to come up with sealing materials that no longer require a minimum size. You know, you can't get a gutta percha master cone much smaller than uh, 15, 10 or 15, and we're, we're advocating that we can go even smaller than that. So we need something that can flow into these areas without having to have gutta percha involved. 
But once again, all got a percha. There you go. Here, this is one of my favorites. Look at the complexity of this root. By the way, I think the lower anterior teeth are the most difficult teeth to do. Would you agree? <laughs> Everybody thinks 100%. they're easy. I think they're yeah. very complex. Very tough. There you go. Here's another great one of mine. This is my, my lightning bolt special. special. Try, to, try to get a file to negotiate that. There you go. some more by the way my actually son, actually explain these cases because these are not your cases here. yeah don't, son, don't take credit for these Rico I'm not my son graduated <laughs> from University of Pacific last year I'm proud to say him and, and he's practicing with me and and he um, he's just a great kid anyway but um, he is. I, I told him I said uh, listen I'd like you to try to introduce pips to your basic fundamental you know endodontic knowledge and and he said well you know he was open to the fact how does it work and I told him well, you continue doing endo the way you were taught in school before you fill those canals, introduce PIPS protocol. Told him the protocol, showed him the tip. He did them, and look at these fills he's getting. These are great here. So it's not that you have to, I mean, it's not that you have to be out 10, 15, 20 years to be able to use this technology. It's, it's, it's not as technique sensitive as it could be. And I think the fact that we, we're using it from a distance and letting the actual phenomena open and negotiate these canals, it can only make it better. So this was in uh, 2008. Steve Buchanan had quoted this. Uh, he said, uh, when I asked Carl Ryder, retired but renowned prosthodontist from Newport Beach, what he most wanted from his endodontist, he said he would prefer it if the endodontist could just suck the dying pulp out of the tooth without removing any dentin. He made that paradigm shifting statement to me back in 1990. So using the power lays, using pips, you can see the pulp just kind of pops right out. Did you use any files on that? Right there? Not yet. Look, it's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> How good is that? <laughs> Usually when the fluid is placed inside and the first uh, activation of the pips, there's a, quite a bit of clouding. And then after 20 seconds or so, we'll place another new volume of fluid in pips it again, and, and that clouding gets less and less, usually between the third and the fourth cycle, and that's, yeah, say again? Yeah, you wait for it's clear, and then we pretty much assume that that's probably as clean as we're going to be able to get it. Uh, between three and four. In most cases, three, and then if, we, if, we st if I still see, you can never pips it enough, and we're only talking about a 20-second interval, 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. Anything more than that is not necessary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, Phil's got a perch, and then I, you seal it with some flowable. I wish I could speed the video up, but it's just, again, showing you real quickly what, uh, what we do. And take a look at all the, all the anastomosis in all the lateral canals. There's hundreds of little lateral canals, like electrical, like just little electrical pulses traveling outside the end of that root. Has anybody ever seen an SCM that looks like that before, of a dentinal wall inside a root canal system? Rally, you ask, ask me what part of the root that was in. Funny you should ask that. That was in the apex. Is that yeah. the apex? So in conclusion, lasers are a useful tool in endodontics. <laughs> and the PIPS laser protocol, when used in addition to current preparation and chemo debriding, can more effectively debride and decontaminate root and accessory canals. This method results in better decontamination and less patient discomfort. That's good. Good thing. Lasers are becoming an ever-increasing state-of-the-art methodology in endodontics. Yeah, and this is, I've always said this, this is not a fad or fancy. PIPS facilitates delivery of constant quality debridement and decontamination of the endodontic canal system. We've got some exciting stuff. We just want to say, you know, the power of PIPS will change your lives. It has changed our lives forever, what we do every day. And, uh, and again, this tooth was a tooth we did not file, we just lasered, and then we literally filled with endores, and we got all these canals, and it was just absolutely stunning. And uh, we, we see this clinically all the time. Um, if you have any question on PIPS, you can go to LairsDental.com. We want to thank Lairs for sponsoring this event today for the WCMID. And um, we want to thank you for coming. Um, we had, uh, we just, uh, we have fun sharing what we're doing, and, hey, uh, and we really, um, we, we want, we're going to, the lasers are going to be here. The lasers are going to be on. If you want to play with the lasers, thank you, Enrique. Thank you, Stuart. 
um, Thanks, feel free to, to play with the lasers. We will we'll stick around. We'll help you uh, take an endo tip and stick it in the, in the tooth if you want. You can see what it's like if you want to feel pips in your fingers. Um, we're here to ask, answer questions. We're not going anywhere. However late you want to stay, we're here. I want to encourage you guys, if you get a moment, it won't take long, just to see how powerful this pips effect is. We'll, uh, we'll have some teeth that we'll just place them in and you can hold them in your fingers and you can feel the uh, concussive force that occurs and then I think you'll get a, a feel for how, how strong this is and how significant we, we feel it'll be. Thank yeah. you very much, everybody. Thank you. Hey, how was it? Is it okay? Okay. okay.